All right, we're back for... Where the fuck <laughs> we're back for? <laughs> fuck! Fuck, restart, restart. <laughs> You're not doing all that again, just do it. Was that good? Should we, let, should we do keep that going again? again? Yeah, let's do that again. Why? Yeah, I'll... I'll... <sighs> No, super. <laughs> Man, this is like the third take and I'm cringe. I hate talking to the camera, but we need to do this R34 update. Where the car has been, what's happening with the car. Long story short, we're putting an RB26 in it. We're missing the entire front end off the car. Uh, let's get into this update. So, Bayside Blue, I painted the car twice. The first time I stuffed it up, the second time I got it right with the boys from Donnybrook Accident Repair Center. You're thinking, well, if you're happy and you got it right, why are you missing a rear bumper, pan? All right, let's go to the front. Why are you missing the entire front end? So, yeah, I, the, the, look, the front bumper and the fenders were Z-Tune Aftermarket. I don't know the brand, I've been asked a million times. They were good. 98% they, of the people would have been happy with the fitment. I think they were maybe just a slightly, like a size too big compared to the originals. So, they had to go. The bonnet is an original V-Spec 2 that actually my friend Scott gave it to me for free. We know that those bonnets are now eight to ten thousand dollars second hand. This is a GTT. I paid eighteen hundred dollars for the entire show. How does this car deserve an eight thousand dollar bonnet? It doesn't. I built it as a driver's car, something that I can build. I bought it when I was nineteen. Today's my birthday. I'm twenty three. A driver's car. I can travel Europe ASAP. So I got to build the car uh, sooner than I can buy a GTR. I get to travel Europe and experience because that was my dream sooner than buying a GTI and doing it with a GTI, if you see what I'm trying to say. And, where the f was I going with this story? Oh, know. but we had to make some sacrifices. To do that, we had to build a car on a budget, which involved, as I said, buying some aftermarket parts that popped up for sale at the time. At the time, the budget was also significantly smaller, and unfortunately, I painted the car the second time with parts I wasn't 100% happy with. Detail I'm trying to aim for nowadays has surpassed what we did two years ago. So this is the solution. I've been messaged multiple times about people complaining about parts going discontinued, side skirts, front ends, the availability of parts, the expense of OEM parts, and I've decided, don't message me of what's coming out. We're working on something huge behind the scenes. Full Z-Tune Dry Carbon, V-Spec 2 bonnets. It's all in the works. I'm gonna reveal it all when the time comes but not just yet. So, that's all I'm gonna say about the front end. The engine, let's go over here. We've got an RB26. Again, thinking outside the box. Wait, don't go where the manifold is. <laughs> um, can you see the manifold? No. Okay. So, for years I've been trying to find this distinct note out of an RB, out of a particular car. I've been researching for years, trying to come down to what has made this car sound so particular. And I think I have found the secret sauce and I've made my manifold from scratch. So, I've teamed up with Tristan from Quickshift uh, TV, AKA Tristan from WTF Auto. He's building the V12 Supra. He's doing the whole car in CAD or on the computer, 3D printing it, making sure that these parts fit and then creating it out of billet. So he's educated me on the world of 3D printing and the power of it. So these are actually hyper-tuned bends that you can purchase for making an exhaust manifold. They come in a variety of different sizes, which we have here. These are all 90 degree bends, also split into also split into 45s. So I've completely calculated my manifold to the desired amount or the desired spec that I want after doing the research that I had to do. 
And we found that I've now completed the manifold out of these and we've ordered the metal ones, so it's nearly, it's nearly done. We're probably about three or four weeks from this manifold being done. Now I can't test the manifold before the engine is complete and we have a running car. This is an RB26 cylinder head. Now the reason I did it is because solid lifters. When you go hydraulic lifters, you're only limited to about 8,000 RPM before you have to change it to a solid lifter. That is about a thousand, a thousand plus dollar exercise to convert your normal RB25 DET, being a series one or a series two to solid lifter. So you might as well put that money towards a 26 head or even better, in my opinion, an RB25 Neo cylinder head. Now I couldn't justify the cost of spending two and a half thousand dollars on an RB25 Neo DET cylinder head because there are still some drawbacks such as I have a need a solution for the intake side while for the 26 the solution was already there. Stay there Preston, two ticks. <laughs> so the RB26 individual throttle bodies being the plenum so we have another two, two sets of these being the six throttle bodies and the last runner which includes where all your injectors and stuff go I picked up a full set for $400. I want individual throttle bodies. It gives you that nice blippy motorbike feel. It's just a very visually appealing solution as well. Now to adapt that to a 25 is slightly a significant amount of work, which I was prepared to do and showcase it so you guys can do it as well. But I've steered away from it and I've decided to just buy a 26 head for $2,400 with some Tomei camshafts, second hand. It's already got the solid lifters and I know for a fact that my 26 ITBs will bolt up and I know that the sound I am chasing will definitely or most likely be there. Even though the RB25 Neo has the same ports as a 26 and is a more modern cylinder head, it, it's not a cylinder head that was carried from 89 to 32 all the way to the 34. Instead, the Neo was produced in the late 90s. It was just a more updated head. I'd love to talk more about it, but my friend Tim is gonna get real pissed off at me because he's done the groundwork to figure out what's so special about the 25 Neo, so I don't just wanna go spill it out on the internet. But long story short, that is potentially the best cylinder head, and more GTR owners would probably be using it if it came into GTR, which it didn't, so purity. Now you're looking at the block, the guys that know what they're looking at will realize that is not a four-wheel drive RB26 block, and I don't need it. I was thinking about going four-wheel drive and that adds a huge cost. All of a sudden you have grip, you want more horsepower, you start braking stuff, you need block braces, you need expensive transmissions, and before you know it, I'm gonna have this super expensive car that most of the time probably doesn't run and I'm getting further and further away from my goal of traveling Europe. So I figured let's just keep it simple, keep it rear-wheel drive, five, 600 horsepower, which would be more than enough and that's where RBs love to be. So I bought an RB25, just they're all the same blocks. The only difference is the naturally aspirated had no oil squirters and the turbo models had oil squirters. This one in particular is the uh, turbo version, doesn't really matter once you go forged pistons and rods anyways. So what I've done is I've purchased an RB26 crankshaft, 500 bucks. Anyone doing a stroker build or whatever, these are floating around for close to nothing nowadays. Let me pull that back. So the 26 crank, goes into the 25 block, like it's nothing, just bolts in. And then the, we just use 26 pistons and rods. We're probably gonna go Nitto or something else aftermarket forged because it's a bare block. And for a fraction of the cost, all of a sudden we have an RB26 long block that suits my application being real wheel drive for the same amount of money a stock RB26 that's been flogged out for the last 25 years would cost me. So new engine, Stock shitty engine, same price, you do the math. Cool, that's the engine sorted. We're just using it for mock-up right now as just a bit of a dummy. The car's gonna get fabricated. Once that exhaust manifold is done, the whole car's getting fabricated. In terms of transmission that's gonna go into this car, I want a DCT for so many reasons. Like traveling in Europe with a DCT gives you a nice spread of gears to be driving around town, to be driving through the mountains. Overtaking is a big deal. In Australia, like no one even does the speed limit on the fucking freeway. Like let alone, you know, anywhere else. So in Australia, it doesn't really matter. Like you can be driving a three speed and uh, like the first three gears is more than enough. Like it's 60, 70, 80, no big deal. But when you go into Europe, you need overtaking. They've got high speed limits. So you need to lower your RPM to get somewhat some fuel efficiency. That seven speed DCT made the most sense. After doing a lot of research and talking to people that have actually completed DCT conversions through Mac ECU, HTG GCUs, 
it seems to be that a lot of people are complaining about the HTG GCU being too immature to be used on the street. Not hating on the brand, some people might have great success, some people might not have great success. I'm just saying I'm not prepared to go out and fork out maybe $10,000 on this conversion and then it doesn't work. In saying that, now you guys are gonna cringe, but I've been driving a Volkswagen Jetta, yeah bros. And it's it's dual clutch, it's one of their, what do they call it, DCT, SMG, no. I don't know. DSG, it's DSG. And it's really nice to drive, but it gets boring really quickly. And I figured I don't really want that in this car. So I've gone back to my idea of CD009 with a 411 diff ratio. It's not gonna give us the best highway, 140K an hour cruising speeds, whatever, doesn't really matter. It's gonna give us a beautiful spread of gears to the point where this car's gonna be really snappy even with the larger size turbo. The reason I went 26 or solid, solid lifter being the main goal is to increase the RPM. The RPM will give me a wider power band and will also allow me to get the sound I want. These engines really sound good with a lot of boost in them and a lot of RPM. So we're just, with the boost, we're gonna be limited to due to pump fuel, we're not gonna go ethanol, but the RPM, we're not gonna be limited to because we're gonna set the engine up to take it and the turbocharger. So that's it, six speed CD009 I'm gonna buy from Nissan, brand new. 411 diff gears, that'll be really nice spread of gears. Full dry carbon front end produced by myself. Brembo brakes, so six pot fronts, four pot rears. I'm talking to a guy called Jarrett in the, in the US and he's coming up with a solution, happy to promote it. It's a very nice and cheap solution to the point where the only thing you're out of pocket for would be the calipers and the adapter bones because when you're doing a rebuild, you're gonna be buying brand new uh, brake pads and rotors regardless, so let's not include that in the cost. And the actual calipers are dirt cheap. I'm talking like 200 US dollars for a set of big six pot Brembos. And then for the rears, we can buy them brand new for about 500 Aussie dollars and they're four piston Brembos for the rear. As for the interior, I've been doing a lot of thinking how we're gonna make this thing look like a GTR. So, oops. We need an MFD, I've already got the center GDR steering wheel, that's sorted. We need seats, we need an MFD. MFDs, I've seen a lot of options. We've got Motec, you know, the big screen, it's very expensive. I don't like the big screen personally. I think anything bigger, anything bigger than this doesn't belong in the car. Your child's little iPad, Android tablet and bullshit, man, fuck that. You, you completely ruin the, the look of the car in my opinion, so I've decided to do this. I picked up this Haltech Racing Street Dash thingy, IQ3. Locally brand new, the guy never used it, and I paid 600 Australian dollars for it. And this fits into here quite beautifully. So we're gonna end up with a solution. Again, I'm gonna get this properly designed and it's gonna be an item that I'm gonna produce out of plastic or carbon fiber or composite, whatever it is, that I can sell to the public as a solution to the MFD. This screen right here is visually appealing. It's very functional. It's made by Howtech, so obviously it does work. It's got all the data that we need, plus more compared to a factory MFD. It's cheaper, it's modern, it doesn't go shit like the MFDs do. And what else was I gonna say? It's readily available, which is important. Um, Another solution was to use a smaller, something like a five inch screen and use this thing called uh, gauge art. But those controllers are like $800 plus the screen and plus all these things talking to one another. I think you're gonna end up with a very laggy setup that's not suited. Like we're trying to build a, a budget GTR, not a shit budget GTR. So I think the IQ3 dash is the only logical option for an MFD solution when you're converting your car to a GTR. As for the actual dashboard, see this is one thing I really regret uh, not buying back in the day. For like 12, 11, 1200 Aussie, you could have bought a brand new Nismo cluster, black, white, you pick the color. They're like four or five grand nowadays. You can't get them. I'm almost gonna have to settle for an R34 GDR normal cluster. If somebody has one they wanna sell sort of for under a thousand bucks, I'll buy it. Otherwise, I don't see the, the, that as an option. However, in saying that, there might be an alternative. My friend Tim repairs these clusters. He's been working on something behind the scenes where there might be a cheaper option. So I'll let you boys know once I find out. As for brand new parts, so we've got the Haltech dash. Now we've got uh, brand new headlights. Again, don't think I'm rich all of a sudden, but my friend Abs that works for Total Nissan, he really hooked it up. He promised these a couple of years back. I never really had the money or could prioritize the headlights to be a purchase. 
The moment they went discontinued, they went five or six grand for a pair and he stuck to his word. He kept a pair of them on the shelf for me. I've still managed to purchase some R34 GTR brand new headlights for what they used to be back in the day. So thank you, Ab. The exhaust system. Um, if Tommy F here, which I don't think he is, but if he's watching, he's gonna cringe so hard of how I unbox this. It's a HKS. Again, I'm not all about the Japanese wank. Um, sorry to be disrespectful to any companies or anything. Personally, I like form and I like function, but I'm not gonna go out of my way and pay ridiculous amounts for this nostalgia tax or whatever you wanna call it. I never, I guess I never grew up during those ages where you know you guys used to watch all these Japanese workshops or whatever build these cars, so you're really attached to it. I grew up in a completely different age, especially in Australia where it's all higher horsepower GTRs and mainly single turbos. Twin turbos, no, nah, not for me. <laughs> That's all I can say without disrespecting too many people. But single turbo all the way, especially with a manifold I'm building, that's gonna be off its face. The reason I got this exhaust is because it was a uh, shout out Wanted Motorsport for getting it in for me. It's three and a half inch. This is what I didn't know. This towel pipe is three and a half inch. In there, it seems like it's three inch. This is a really, really well manufactured part. It was about 1500 bucks for the exhaust. For me to go out and buy some quality mufflers, so we need two mufflers, we need a heap of pipe, and we need Dan, we need Dan to put it all together. Once you add everything up, you're probably not too far off 1500 bucks. Now you can do it with cheaper Chinese mufflers, but like, what's the point of even doing the job in the first place? These, I know that the car that I'm trying to replicate the sound of, this is the exhaust system it ran. So I just ordered the same one that it ran. That was the most logical thing for me to do. Moving over, this is, I've never done this. Back in the day, like before I even owned an R34, I did really do a lot of research into what I want. Now, if it was a GTR, maybe my wants and desires would be a little bit different, but I think I always knew that I was gonna end up with a fakie, what I was gonna do with it. Starting this YouTube channel, meeting everybody I've met along the way, this has completely transformed my vision and, and my life as well. Like, I would never have got into restoring cars or producing carbon fiber parts if it wasn't for this YouTube channel and all the people I've met. This was probably never on the list of parts to purchase. It's an AES dump valve, it's a three inch, and that exhaust is mega, mega quiet. It's been designed, I had a peek inside the muffler. It's not just your hollow straight through muffler. Like that thing is super dense, should really quiet the car down. Now uh, two 40 millimeter wastegates weren't enough to make this thing loud. We've got a three inch dump, pipe, uh, dump valve. So pretty much this is gonna be in the exhaust system sort of as a bypass. It's gonna be wired up to a switch. Now how you can do these is it's got a solenoid and you can actually do it where it senses boost pressure, it opens up that flap, and the car becomes louder. How I'm gonna do it is just on a switch, like an on and off thing. So if I wanna be loud, I just keep it off. If I wanna be fucking loud, I just turn it on. So cruising speeds, I think this will be beautiful with this exhaust, but when it gets on gate, regardless, it'll be super loud. If it gets on gate, and this thing is open, it's gonna be mega loud, but I think it's gonna give us a really, really nice note. That's sort of all I can tell you for an update at the moment. The fabrication should be pretty epic on this car as well, like nothing that hasn't been done before. The manifold's pretty funky though, but all the intercooler piping is just your usual aluminum mandrel bends. Three and a half inch dump, you guys have seen it, we've already done it, so. Another talking video, but I hope you guys got a bit of an idea of what's happening with the R34 and my craziness and desires to make it nice again. The wheels, I tried ordering some through Jesse Streeter, the Inky RS 05 RRs, no ETAs, like not even like three or four, six months, like nothing, we don't know when they're coming out. So I was like, shit, they're really the wheels I wanted, but I can't even get them. All right, cool. Let me know in the comments below what you might wanna see in the future from the R34 Skyline or what you might want explained in a little bit more detail, but for the most part, that is it. Get you later. <clears throat> Hey mate, hey. you fucking dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, you curly f**k. <laughs>